Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be talking about how we can find the area between two curves. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Of course, we're going to start off with an example. So here we have the two functions of square root of x and also x, and I already have them graphed out right here so we can see the area. So we are wanting to find the area, right, which means we know we're going to go ahead and integrate. But the question is, what are we integrating? So let's go ahead and think about this. When we're integrating, we are finding the area between the curve and the x-axis, right? So let's, for example, go ahead and integrate this upper function. So I'm going to integrate the square root of x in terms of x. And just by looking at the graph, I can see the bounds are between 0 and 1, right? And let's go ahead and talk about what this represents. So this represents we're including this whole area, right? And we're going all the way to the x-axis. So this is the entire area that we just found. But we don't want to find that entire area because we are not interested in this whole thing. Right? We don't care. That's not between the curves. I don't want to find the area. So I want to find a way to get rid of it. Is there any way that we can represent that area? And the question and the answer is yes. Because what we're doing is we're taking our other function, and this is x, and we're integrating it between 0 and 1, right? So that right there represents the area between the function x and the x-axis. So if I subtract off that area, all I'm left with now is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the area between the two curves, right? So there's another way that we can go about this. And if I took a little test rectangle, right, I'll just take that one right there. We take our height, our biggest height, right? In this case, our biggest height is going to be the square root of x. And what we're doing is we are subtracting off the shorter height. So we are get ridding this little height. And that little height is represented by x. So we take the square root of x and we subtract x. But we're doing this over the course of all areas between 0 and 1. And of course, we're integrating this in terms of x. So that's another way that we can write it. For every little rectangle that we're doing, we're taking the big height and we're subtracting off the little height because what that leaves is a height in between. We can see from the graph that the bounds are going to be 0 and 1. But what would happen if we were not given the graph? So for example, what we do is we take our two functions and we set them equal to each other. We want to see where they intersect. So if I were solving for this, what we could do is square both sides. So we get x is equal to x squared. We can subtract over that x and we can factor out, right? So we can factor out an x, we get x minus 1. And this gives us our two values. First, we have that x is equal to 0. And then second, we have x is equal to 1. So that's another way that we can go ahead and solve for the bounds. You can either look at it graphically or you can solve it algebraically. So now that we set up the integral, we can go ahead and integrate, right? So we have the integral between 0 and 1, and I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. So we have x to the 1 half minus x. That way we can really see power rule and what's going on here. So here we end up getting, when we take the antiderivative, x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves minus, and that becomes x to the power of 2 divided by 2 between 0 and 1. So here when I plug in upper minus lower, the lower is going to weigh because we're plugging in 0 into both of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and not even write it, and I'll plug in that value of 1. So that numerator becomes 1 divided by 3 halves, and we are subtracting 1 half. But what I can go ahead and do is when we divide by a fraction, we multiply it by it flip. So that becomes 2 thirds. So now I can combine this into one fraction. I'll go ahead and make the denominator 6. And we end up with an area of 1 6. And 1 6 represents the area between the two curves. Alrighty, so here we have the trick. So we take their intersection points, x1 and x2, and we take the upper function and we subtract off the lower function because that's going to leave the area between the two curves. Now, if we're integrating in terms of y, we take the intersection points, but we take the y values, right? But this time we sit, take right and we subtract off the left function. And that leaves the area between those two curves. And that's when we're integrating in terms of y. We want to go ahead and find the area enclosed between sine of x and cosine of x described by the graph below. And so this has a highlighted region. And first, what we're going to talk about is their intersection point. So I want to see what this point is, and I want to see what this point is. And so this is going to occur when cosine of x is equal to sine of x, right? There's not necessarily a nice way to solve for this algebraically, so I went ahead and gave the unit circle right. Where does cosine of x equal sine of x? And that's going to occur at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. That's some knowledge that you might need to have just in the back of your brain to use for stuff like this. But that helps us with our bounds, right? So right now I know my bounds are going to be lower bound is pi over 4 and upper bound is 5 pi over 4, right? 
So now we want to figure out how are we going to find the area between these two curves. And what we do is we take the upper function. So example, we're taking this height. So that goes all the way up to sine of x, right? So what we're going to do is subtract off that bottom function, which is cosine of x, right? We're doing upper minus lower. Why does that work out? That's because this lower function right here is going to be negative. And when we subtract a negative value, that ends up as a positive number. So we're actually, we're adding those two areas together. So that's why it gives an area between these two curves. Okay, let's go ahead and actually integrate this thing. First, we're going to take the antiderivative. So first, we get negative cosine of x minus sine of x. And we're integrating this between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So here we have negative, and cosine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2 minus negative root 2 over 2. And now we're going to go ahead and subtract a negative, so that becomes positive. And we get cosine of pi over 4 is equal to root 2 over 2. And don't forget to distribute that minus sign to the other one right here. I see that's super common, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these negatives. We have root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2. Oh my gosh, plus root 2 over 2. Shocking. And so here we end up with 2 root 2. And that right there would be our solution. That represents the area between cosine of x and sine of x on that interval. Here we have another example. We want to find the area enclosed by f of x equals that function and g of x. So in this case, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to graph it ourselves. So if you like to see it visually, this is a great method for you. So here I'm going to plug in 0 and I get a value of 5. When I plug in 1, I get 5 minus 1 is 4. So I get 4 on either side of this, right? When I plug in 2, then I get a value of 1. So here our function is going to look something like that. That was not a bad drawing. Okay, now let's go ahead and graph our other one. So we have g of x equals x squared minus 3. So I'm going to plug in 0. I get a value of negative 3. When I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So I'll be negative 2 on the other side. And then when I plug in 2, I end up with a positive value of 1. And this, when we graph it out, you get to see their intersection points pretty nicely. I fixed those points. Okay. So now we can see really what we're trying to find, and we're trying to find the area in between these two curves. So this helps us see the upper, which is f of x, and our lower, which is g of x. And it also helps us see our points of intersection, right? So here we're integrating between negative 2 and positive 2. We're taking our upper function, so here we get 5 minus x squared, and we're subtracting our lower function, x squared minus 3, right? Integrating this in terms of x. And this gives us this entire height in between, right? So here, let's go ahead and simplify this first before we take the antiderivative. So we end up getting 5 plus 3, which is equal to 8. And then here we get negative x squared minus x squared. So that's equal to negative 2x squared. And this right here is what we're going to be integrating. So let's first find the antiderivative. We get 8x minus 2 times x to the power of 3 divided by 3. And this is between negative 2 and positive 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. going to be an algebra kind of day. Okay, so first we get 16 minus 16 thirds, and we're going to subtract off this next value, so that's going to be negative 16, and that's going to be plus 16 thirds, and I'm going to distribute this negative real quick. So 16 plus 16, we get 32 minus 32 divided by 3, and here we end up with an area of 64 divided by 3, right? And that right there would be our final solution. So that represents the area between these two curves. So another way that we can solve for bounds, if you didn't want to do it graphically or you wanted to check yourself, is you could set the two functions equal to one another because that shows us where they're equal, where they intersect. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'm going to add 3. So I get 8 minus x squared equals x squared, and I'll add that over. 8 is equal to 2x squared, and we can divide by 2. 4 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and we get end up getting positive, and negative 2 is equal to x, which works with our bounds, right? So now that we have our bounds, we're integrating between negative 2 and positive 2. Here you want to check which one's upper and which one's lower. So take a value in those bounds. So I'm going to go ahead and take x equals 0, and you plug it into both functions. So f of 0 is 5 minus 0 squared, which is equal to 5. 
g of 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 3, which is equal to negative 3. And so here we have the larger value is going to be the upper function, and the smaller value is going to be the lower. So if you didn't want to plug it in graphically and you love the algebra way, that's another great version for you. So here we, have, we want to find the area bounded between these two functions. Notice here, now we are integrating in terms of y. So what we could do first is graph these out, or if you wanted to, you could solve this real quick. So y squared minus y, and here we get x is equal to negative y squared plus y. And let's go ahead and try to graph these. So I'm going to call this x1, and I'm going to call this x2. So let's do x1 first. I'm going to plug in 0. We end up with 0, right? When I plug in y is equal to positive 1, I get 1 squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So the x value is still equal to 0, right? When I plug in 2, I end up getting 2 squared minus 2, which is equal to 2. And so I go x is equal to 2. Now, if I were to plug in negative 1, I would get negative 1 squared is 1 minus a negative 1. That is a value of 2. So here I would also go out 2. So I can see the function is doing something like this, right? And that is our x1. Now let's go ahead and try to do our x2. So here when I plug in 0, we're also going to get a value 0, right? Which is one of the intersection points. And now when I plug in a value of 1, I get negative 1 squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So again, I have the other intersection point. When I plug in y is equal to 2, here I get negative 2 squared plus 2, which ends up being an x value of negative 2. So I go this way. Same thing when I plug in negative 1, I end up with an x value of negative 2. And so here our function is doing something like this. So now what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to find the area right there. And when we're working in terms of y, our rectangles are going to look something like that. So here what we can do is we have, we're integrating between 0 and 1. But when we're working with y, we take the right function and we subtract the left function. So here, the right function is the blue one, so we get negative y squared plus y. And we're going to go ahead and subtract off the left function, which is the red one. So we get y squared minus y. And we're integrating this in terms of dy. So why do we do right minus left? It's the same reason that we do upper minus lower. We take the right height, which I drew right there, and we subtract off the left height. And that gives us the entire area, right? Because this on this right side is negative. It's negative because it's below the y-axis and we're integrating in terms of y, right? We're no longer integrating in terms of x. So it's like we take our graph and turn it sideways. And so when we subtract a negative, we get a positive. So it's like we're adding on that area. So let's go ahead and simplify this first, right? So we get negative y squared plus y. I'll distribute that minus sign. So we get minus y squared plus y. So let's go ahead and take that antiderivative. So here we end up getting negative 2y cubed divided by 3 plus 2y squared divided by 2. And if you wanted, you could simplify that just to be y squared between 0 and 1. And let's go ahead and do upper minus lower. So here we have the area between those two guys is 1 third. So that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.